Jack does crazy things with wild animals to help protect and study them. Really crazy and maybe dangerous. But Jack is a trained expert. Do not do what Jack does. Seriously, approaching and handling wild animals can be dangerous. Really, just don't do it. I'm on a mission in Australia. Wow! To find big snakes oh, yes. in small places. It's a serious snake. Thanks. Whoa! This is crazy scary. Really big. Jack! My name is Jack Randall. I've devoted my life to bringing awareness of incredible creatures. How cool is this? To the entire world. We have yeah. released our sloth into the wild. To me. That is a beauty. No animal is too creepy. Wow! Wow! Too slippery ah. or too dangerous. Oh, he's going up me. I'm searching for pythons with Australian python breeder, Dr. Gavin Bedford. What we've seen in the last few years is the python population has actually crashed. Why is that? The vegetation has a bad year because of low rains. There's no growth, no Wait. python. I just heard some rustling in there. There's definitely something in there. Look at this. Just watch these. They're very sharp. Ah, there they are! I can hardly get this thing up. What is it? Woo! Look at that. That is an absolute monster of oh a blue God. tongue lizard. Look at that blue tongue coming out. That is an iconic Australian creature. Wow. Look at those tiny little legs. They can't really go very fast. Just push through like a bulldozer where they're going. That's why we heard it. Normally, if they're really grumpy, they'll open their mouth out and show that blue tongue. These big lizards can live up to 20 years. They use their tongue for smelling, as well as scaring away predators. But if they're really scared, they could bite their tail off and run away. You would never see a tongue like that in any other animal. Well, it's a great find. It is a, it's very Fantastic. rare. Fantastic. All very right, rare. let's put him back. Off you go. Back to your home. Back to the task at hand, finding snakes. But pythons are really well camouflaged. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack in these rocks. You feel like you see something, but it's not. There we are. Yeah. I think we've got a carpet python right in there. Oh, see, this is a non-venomous snake. This is a constrictor snake. So it uses its thick coils to literally suffocate its prey. But you can sense that I'm here. He's, he's starting to call back. I'm going to have to see if I can just pull him out. I'm going to have to get my hand in there. I've got him! Oh, come on, out you come. Woo! -hoo! There you are, carpet python. Wow! Look at that, that is amazing. Look at that, Look, he's not even acting aggressive at all. Wow. Under there, you just, oof. This is actually the first species of snake I caught in the wild. I picked it up and it bit me straight away on the arm. And so my first reaction was that this snake would bite me, but actually behaving beautifully for me. The carpet python can grow up to 11 feet long. They can sense the body heat of their prey when they're hunting. And they eat lots of rats. And because their numbers in the wild are declining, Every one I can get my hands on is a gem. Oh man, that is special. Look at way wrapping up that tree. Amazing. See ya. And there are other carpet pythons with different patterns. This snake here is a jungle carpet python. Carpet pythons are really, really cool. In fact, they're doing amazing things for the ecosystem. And if you find one around your house, they're actually managing the rodent population there. They love eating rodents. So if you see a snake like this, just think that it's doing you a favor. It's getting rid of all the rats that might be around in the shed. Watch me interact with more amazing animals. Jack does crazy things with wild animals to help protect and study them. Really crazy and maybe dangerous. But Jack is a trained expert. Do not do what Jack does. Seriously, approaching and handling wild animals can be dangerous. Really, just don't do it. I'm researching the descendants of dinosaurs. Ah, I got him. In the waters of Australia. These things want to eat you. 
this is absolutely massive. saltwater crocodile. Look at that mouth agape. Crocodiles are amazing creatures. They're related to birds, but can stay underwater for up to an hour. And despite having big teeth, they don't chew their food. Even at this size, if it bit me, that would really hurt. Those teeth are still very, very sharp, still got a very strong jaw pressure. This guy is gonna eat a lot of different animals on the way to becoming an adult, starting with little crustaceans and insects, working his way up the food chain, eating fish, ending up eating possibly even big buffalo. Wow, what an absolute beauty. That little guy is cute. But I want to see how big they really get. Here we go. So I'm visiting a place where Australians like to go for fun. Saltwater crocs can grow up to be 20 feet long and weigh a whopping tonne. And it's easy to see why they've been around since the age of the dinosaur. Not only do they look prehistoric, but they are perfect killing machines, able to lunge out of the water and clamp down on their prey. With a bite force of 3,700 pounds per square inch, which is the mightiest of all living animals and rivals that of the extinct T-Rex. Wow, that is crazy. 900 kilos, almost one tonne of dinosaur right there. So close. I can't believe how unbelievably big they are. Absolute brute, massive dinosaurs. I can't wait to see those guys out in the wild. Oh! Wow! Join me again for more fearless adventures. Jack does crazy things with wild animals to help protect and study them. Really crazy and maybe dangerous. But Jack is a trained expert. Do not do what Jack does. Seriously. Approaching and handling wild animals can be dangerous. Really, just don't do it. I'm in Australia. No! Trying to get close to its most famous animal. The kangaroo. Oh, look at this. So precious. This is a little baby joey agile wallaby. Australia has lots of hopping animals. The smaller ones are called wallabies and the big ones are kangaroos. But generally, if you look like this, people call you a kangaroo. They hop around and that allows them to escape from predators, including the dingoes and snakes. Wallabies are marsupials, meaning the babies feed and grow in their mother's pouch. Adult wallabies can swim if they need to escape predators and they have very strong tails that they can use as a third leg for support. At this age, four and a half months, usually he would be in a pouch of the mother. The caring of a jerry this size is 24 hours round the clock work. That would include frequent feeding. In the pouch of his mother, he would be getting that all the time. But in this case, I rescued the little guy from the side of the road. Without the protection of his mother's pouch, he needs immediate care. So I'm on my way to a kangaroo rescue centre called Nina's Ark. Is it Nina? Yeah, good morning. Hi, I'm Jack. How can I help you? Yeah, I found a little oh. joey on the side of a road. Oh. A little baby. Oh, Tiny thank you. Joey. Yeah, it's a little agile. So I was a bit worried that actually he was a bit hot and thirsty. Maybe we'd been there the whole night. 
Does he look okay? He's probably be. been there a while because he's really hungry. See, he's chewing on the pouch and it's really, really hungry. So we'll go over and get him warm. So you got a hospital here? Yeah, and it comes in handy, I can tell you. I'm going to take him out of your snake bag. I'm yeah. going to put him in this little blanket here, this little bunny rug. I'm going to wrap him up. He can't generate heat until he gets hair. Pat, if you'll just hold him until I make some milk for him. Oh, can't wait to feed him. And this should be fine. Hey, let's try to drink, shall we? Sometimes it takes him three days to take the nipple. Oh, there you go. There he goes. I've never fed a baby human, but now this is my first time feeding a kangaroo. I think it's kind of fitting. I think that's it. That's great. Man. Did a wonderful thing. I feel very attached to this Jerry now. <laughs> well, to be part of this. We may have to call really him special. Jack. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'd love it if you did call him Jack. <laughs> Nina has successfully rehabbed countless Jerry's over the years. And it's amazing that my little Jerry has a chance of survival. In a year's time, my Jerry will be in the same position these Jerry's are. It'll be a year old and ready for release back into the wild. Now, there's another young Jerry that is ready to take that step. First, we have to catch it. I'll bring you around. Uh, you got him. So this is the best way of actually handling a kangaroo. Their tails are extremely strong. Their legs would break if I was holding their legs. So that's actually how you catch a kangaroo, by the tail. OK, off you go. Woohoo! Well, that's an amazing feeling, just releasing an animal into the wild that actually has been saved. This is just incredible. She's in no rush to leave the safety of Nina's Ark. I guess I understand that, but she'll eventually make her way into the bush. We're going to be monitoring that kangaroo over the next eight days, seeing how this Jerry comes back here into the safe haven and goes back into the wild. These really are her first hops of freedom, and I can't wait for my Jerry to end up in the same position as her. Oh, look at him there. OK, I think that's it. He's just waving goodbye. Goodbye. Join me again to see more of Australia's most incredible animals. Jack does crazy things with wild animals to help protect and study them. Really crazy and maybe dangerous. But Jack is a trained expert. Do not do what Jack does. Seriously, approaching and handling wild animals can be dangerous. Really, just don't do it. I'm at Australia's Great Barrier Reef. There's a dugong right there. On a mission to study the magnificent sea turtles who call this place home. Wow, look at you. This is the Great Barrier Reef. It's so large, it can be seen from space. The shelter and food the reef provides makes it the perfect habitat for marine turtles. So I'm going to be joining a research team headed by Dr Ian Bell, and we're going to be tagging and researching green turtles. Green sea turtles can swim for thousands of miles. They can live up to 100 years old. But as a species, They've been around for over 100 million years. We'll be using Dr. Bell's hands-on technique of diving off the boat to catch them. When we spot something, I'll get to the front of the bow and dive and try and catch it. And then I can just hang on. All right, we've got one. It's quite a big tall. You can see it. OK, slowing down. We're actually just literally moving the boat to a point where I can get close enough to jump on it. Just be uh, careful you don't go too sharp, you know, you don't want to do a face plant. Ready, ready. all these different patterns and colorations. Just perfect. With the catching complete, we're headed back to the beach. 
to collect important data on this turtle. So yeah, first thing we want to do is tag it so it has a number to go by. 33.6 inches. Wow, I'm interested to see how much this guy weighs. <laughs> 85. 85 wow, that is impressive. 185 pounds of turtle. That is heavier than me. You can see now how strong and how heavy they actually are. And it's doing pretty well, it looks like. JR. <laughs> I've named that one. That will, that will rub off, but we actually put that pink paint on because when we're about to dive off and we see any pink paint, you know, it's already been caught this year. But look how beautiful it is. When you look close up at uh, these turtles and you start to see the details, how thick and strong that shell really is. A bit of a battle from a little hatchling to get to the point where they can survive out here on the reef. Anyway, this is time to release this big old green turtle. We tag the turtles so that over time the scientists can study their health, as well as their population and migration patterns. Yes! Amazing. Job done. <laughs> Join me again for more fearless adventures. Jack does crazy things with wild animals to help protect and study them. Really crazy and maybe dangerous. But Jack is a trained expert. Do not do what Jack does. Seriously, approaching and handling wild animals can be dangerous. Really, just don't do it. I'm in Australia on a mission. Oh my God, wow. To research some of the world's most dangerous animals. Oh, coming towards me. This is a scary, scary snake. In Australia, the smallest creatures can put you in the hospital. Or worse. Oh, wow! Check it out! Wow, look at this! A big tarantula right there. This is the Queensland whistling tarantula. They make this kind of whistling sound by rubbing their, their fangs together. Oh! Whoa, look at that, rearing up. That is ready to bite. OK. These are one of the biggest spiders out here in Australia. Some people call it the bird-eating spider. And a bite from one of these can cause vomiting for up to eight hours. Ah! If I move too quickly, it might go down into the aggressive mode again. Ah. Guys, really be gentle and don't move quick, because the spider will sing its fangs in me. That was a bit of a close encounter with a tarantula. Happy hunting. Now I want to find a venomous snake. These are the snakes that inject a toxin into their prey through their fangs. That toxin is called venom. For my mission, I'm working with a snake scientist, Dr. Bruno Samoz, who's collecting venom for his colleagues to use as medicine. I think he's gone. Wait. You saw a bit of movement? Yeah. Whoa! Check this out. Look at that. Wow. Death adder. This snake is unique. It has a big triangular head, but a very small body. The biggest threat for the death adder is the poisonous cane toad. And unlike many snakes that lay eggs, it gives birth to live young. You're getting the venom cup ready? Yep. We're going to collect the venom from the adult death adder here. What I'm going to do is use my snake hook and get behind the head. Yep. Woo! OK. I've got this snake behind the head. Collecting the venom will help scientists create anti-venom, which is medicine used to save the lives of people who've been bitten by a venomous snake. Ah, oh, wow! Venom is dripping down, so we've got some venom. Mm -hmm. Wow, beautiful. 
That's enough to kill a few people easily. You can see those fangs there. It makes me extremely, extremely nervous doing this kind of stuff. Bruno, do you think there's enough for a sample there? Yes, yeah, more than enough. Perfect. OK, I'm going to have to carefully take this away. Just slowly. There you go. Ah. OK, there we are. We've got the venom, but now I've actually probably got the most dangerous part of this procedure. I've got to let go of the head and pull my hand super, super quick, because if it tries to bite me, it's going to be lightning, lightning quick, OK? So get ready for the release. Woo! Beauty. There you go. Well, I think she's done her job for science. You reckon we should just leave her alone? Yep. Perfect. And now we have enough venom to save a few lives. Yes, exactly. Let's go. Join me again to see more of Australia's most incredible animals. Jack does crazy things with wild animals to help protect and study them. Really crazy and maybe dangerous. But Jack is a trained expert. Do not do what Jack does. Seriously, approaching and handling wild animals can be dangerous. Really, just don't do it. I'm in Australia. Whoa! On a mission to understand how animals survive in the wild and help those that can't. About a third of Australia is covered in deadly hot desert. Not many animals can survive out here, but some have been able to adapt. Oh my, wow, look at that. I'm gonna pick him up very, very gently. Totally, totally harmless. <laughs> Thorny devil, that's what it's called. It looks like it's got these devil horns on the either side of its head. But there's nothing frightening to me about this devil. This lizard has a false head on the back of its neck to confuse predators. It can change colour to blend into the surroundings. And it eats thousands of ants a day. A little lizard with lots of spikes all over its body. To live out here, you have to be extremely adapted to the environment. If you look all around me, there's no water resource, there's no rain. How does this lizard survive with such little water? Now, the thorny devil gets its water from the channels in its skin and manages to extract the tiniest amount of water molecules that are in the air, grasses, and also in the sand. That's an incredible adaptation. But other animals are having a much harder time. Brumbies are Australia's wild horses. They were brought from England in 1788 to help explorers journey through the outback. When trains were invented, brumbies were released and no longer needed. Now, over 300,000 brumbies roam the desert. Some of them are struggling to adapt to the current drought. This is one of the last water holes in this whole area. It's so dry. This is the only water resource for the animals around here. The horses are a lot more vulnerable to thirst, so if they haven't drunk for a week, they'll die. So they're out here looking for water, and we're out here to rescue them and give them a chance to survive. Stand by. I'm joining forces with Australian horse experts Brian and Anna. They've devoted their lives to rescuing the wild brumbies. Once they come down to this area, they won't, hopefully won't see us. Go into that pen, and then we'll close the gate. And they're the ones that will get rescued from these life-threatening desert conditions. Now he's coming in. Once the heads come up, we'll run. Right now, they're still drinking. They haven't seen us yet. These horses can have a second chance now and can join good homes that will provide them with a lifelong supply of food and water. Join me again for more fearless adventures.